Hello, everyone, and thanks to all of you for joining us for today's sessions. It's a real privilege to be able to contribute to today's symposium, so I'd like to say a very big thank you to the ITU for inviting me to speak. I'm Simon Kemp, and over the next 10 minutes or so, I'll be sharing some findings taken from social media data that I believe offer valuable insights into broader ICT adoption and behaviours. Just a bit of context before I begin, I run a management consultancy called Kepios that helps organisations all over the world to make sense of what people are really doing online. And a big part of our work builds on the global digital reports that we produce on behalf of We Are Social and Hootsuite. These reports provide the very latest insights into what people are doing online in every country in the world. And best of all, we make all of these reports available completely for free over at datareportal.com. These reports cover a wide variety of digital behaviours, but our social media data is particularly interesting for anyone studying ICT adoption, because it offers almost real-time insights into evolving digital trends. And what's more, we can break this data down by age, by gender, and by location, and these are the areas that I'll be exploring with you in today's presentation. We should get a chance to address some of your questions in the panel discussion later in today's session, but if you have any questions for me after today, you'll find me on Twitter and LinkedIn as Eskimon. But with that, let's dive into the data, starting with a quick overview of social media use around the world. And the big headline to start with is that more than half of the world's total population now uses social media each month. Our Digital 2020 October Global Statshot report reveals that more than 4.1 billion people around the world use social media today, equating to roughly 53% of the world's total population. However, it is worth noting that most social media companies restrict the use of their platforms to people aged 13 and above. So if we compare the number of social media users to populations in eligible age groups, the data show that more than two-thirds of all those people who can use social media already do. User numbers have been growing quickly over recent months too. The latest data show that global social media users have increased by more than 450 million in the past 12 months, equating to year-on-year -year growth of more than 12%. And what's more, social media growth actually appears to be accelerating. Global user numbers grew by 180 million during Q3 alone, representing quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 4.6%. And for perspective, that means that an average of almost 2 million people started using social media for the very first time every single day between July and September. However, just as we see with broader internet use, social media use still isn't evenly distributed around the world. If we compare the latest social media user numbers to eligible populations aged 13 and above, we see that adoption varies significantly by region. For example, roughly 8 in 9 people aged 13 plus across Central and Southern America use social media today, but that figure drops to less than 1 in 8 in Middle Africa. But these figures don't just offer insights into social media adoption. Our analysis suggests that nearly 9 in every 10 internet users around the world now use social media. And these high levels of adoption may point to a potential opportunity. If such a large share of internet users are indeed active on social media, could social media data also help us to identify broader trends in ICT adoption and use around the world? Now, with that hypothesis in mind, let's dig a bit deeper into the data to see what it might tell us, starting with a closer look at social media adoption by age. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the simplest finding is that younger people account for the largest share of social media users. Combined deduplicated advertising audience data for Facebook, Instagram and Facebook Messenger shows that people aged 18 to 34 account for more than half of these platforms' total users. Now note that this advertising audience data doesn't cover all of these platforms' users, and in particular it doesn't include users living in countries affected by US sanctions. And furthermore, it doesn't include a representative sample of social media users in China due to the reduced availability of these platforms within the country. However, the latest data from CNNIC shows that these younger groups also account for the largest share of China's 930 million social media users. Now, the previous chart offered insights into the share of social media audiences by age and by gender, but this next chart shows the percentage of the total population in each age group that uses social media, once again based on that combined audience for Facebook, Instagram and Facebook Messenger. Now, it is worth highlighting that this data only covers those countries where those platforms account for the largest share of social media users. But with those caveats in mind, this data indicates that 9 in every 10 people aged 18 to 24 already use social media today, with the figure for people aged 25 to 34 not far behind, at 86%. 
Now, it is worth noting that there are some interesting curiosities in Facebook's age data, because the company reports audience age based on users' self-reported values. For example, as we can see here, there are some peculiar spikes in user numbers at ages 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And my hypothesis is that these spikes are the result of users rounding the year of birth to the nearest turn of a decade, either due to privacy concerns or perhaps due to some gentle vanity. However, I still haven't worked out why there's a spike in users born in 1987, who show up as the peculiar spike at 33 years old on this chart. Just in case you're curious though, the pattern of these spikes is identical for both male and female users. But as a result of these anomalies, we need to be careful not to go down to too granular a level when we're analysing age data from these platforms. And my advice would be to focus on broader age groups when analysing social media data, rather than trying to analyse the data by single year age bands. However, these anomalies have remained relatively stable over the past few years, so we can still draw representative insights from how these numbers evolve over time. And one of the most interesting findings is that older age groups have seen some of the fastest growth in social media adoption over the past few months. For example, as we can see on this chart, people aged 65 and above represent Facebook's fastest growing audience at the moment, and user numbers in this age group have increased twice as quickly as the overall average over the past 12 months. This next chart tracks quarterly growth in Facebook users aged 65 and above, and as you can see in the middle of the chart here, growth accelerated significantly between January and April, when people started to adjust their behaviour due to the emerging coronavirus pandemic. However, growth in older users hasn't been restricted to Facebook, and interestingly, a similar growth pattern has also been playing out on Instagram, which has typically been associated with a more youth-oriented audience. And while it's worth noting that older age groups started from a more modest base here, Instagram users aged 65 and above have increased by 64% since this time last year. As I alluded to earlier, my hypothesis is that COVID-19 has played a meaningful role in these trends, as older people try to stay in touch with younger family members whilst following social distancing guidelines. However, while the cause of these trends may only be temporary, there is a good chance that their impact will be much more enduring. And that's because social media tends to be a high-frequency activity, with data from various platforms indicating that more than half of all users are active every day. So, if seniors also use social media on this regular basis, their overall levels of digital familiarity should increase, resulting in greater confidence and adoption of other areas of ICT. But social media data doesn't just offer useful insights into age. It's also helpful when it comes to mapping the digital divide between genders. Now, just before we dig into the data here, it's important to note that most social platforms only allow advertisers to target by binary gender, so I'm only able to report data for female and male audiences. But even this binary data offers some valuable insights. For example, at a global level, women account for 45.9% of social media users, while men account for 54.1%. And relatively speaking, that means that men are roughly 18% more likely to use social media than women. And for reference, that figure closely matches the gender gap reported by GSMA Intelligence for general mobile internet use around the world. However, social media data clearly indicates that the gender gap varies significantly by region. For example, female social media users actually outnumber male users across the Americas and Europe, while gender ratios are relatively evenly balanced in Eastern and Southeastern Asia. But the data tell quite a different story for the Middle East, Africa and Southern Asia, and in particular Southern Asia shows the greatest imbalance in social media use by gender, with male users currently outnumbering female users by a factor of 3 to 1. And what's more, this gender gap in Southern Asia has only narrowed by a couple of percentage points in the past two years, despite the overall number of social media users in the region growing by more than 30% over the same period. However, the data also show that once women start using social media, they actually tend to be more active than men. For example, data from Facebook shows that women are almost twice as likely as men to post a comment, and in some age groups, women are almost three times as likely to comment as their male peers. Once again, though, values do vary meaningfully by country, but our analysis suggests that levels of economic development are not the only driver of these differences. For example, the typical female Facebook user in Moldova leaves seven times as many comments as her male compatriot, but in Benin and Pakistan, men are significantly more likely to post comments than women. 
And while this chart only looks at one specific action on Facebook, even these limited findings may offer valuable insights into the likelihood that women will engage in other kinds of public online activity too. So as we've already seen, social media data can offer a wealth of insights into ICT use by age and by gender. But what about insights into ICT adoption in urban versus rural areas? Now, it's important to note that there's no globally agreed definition for what constitutes an urban setting, so instead I'll be comparing social media activity in larger cities to activity outside of those conurbations. Once again, though, these simple comparisons provide some very useful insights. For example, the data suggests that more than half of the combined global audience of Facebook, Instagram and Facebook Messenger lives in cities with at least half a million inhabitants. And if we compare that to the share of the total population that lives in these cities, we learn that social media users are significantly more likely to live in large urban centres than the population as a whole. And specifically, 52% of the world's social media users live in cities with at least half a million inhabitants, but just 29% of the world's total population lives in those same locations. And the clear takeaway from this data is that rural communities are significantly less likely to have adopted internet-connected technologies than their city-dwelling peers. More importantly, however, this urban-rural split is even more pronounced in developing economies. The tables on this chart show the share of the total population living in cities with at least 100,000 inhabitants and compares that ratio to the share of the country's social media users that live in those same locations. Now the key data here is the social versus population column on the right hand side of each table, which compares the urban concentration of each country's social media users to the urban concentration of its overall population. And the higher the number in those right-hand columns, the more likely it is that social media users are concentrated in big cities, with a significantly smaller share of users living in small towns or rural areas. Now, for ease of comparison, I've highlighted a number of developing economies in orange text. And as you can see from those right-hand columns, the urban concentration of social media audiences in these countries is considerably higher than the urban concentration in more developed nations. And it's particularly high in Ethiopia and Uganda, where social media users are more than 11 times as likely to live in large cities as those countries' populations as a whole. But given the importance of tracking this urban-rural divide, especially when it comes to issues such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the encouraging takeaway from these findings is that social media data may be able to offer simple and timely ways to supplement more comprehensive survey data. Now sadly that's all I've got time for in today's presentation, but hopefully that's already given you plenty to think about and inspired some new ideas for your own research. And I'll be happy to try and answer any questions you may have as part of the upcoming panel discussion too, so here's a quick recap of the topics that I've covered over the past 10 minutes. Don't worry if you don't get a chance to ask your question during the panel though, you'll find tens of thousands more charts exploring digital behaviours for every country in the world in our free reports over on datareportal.com. And do please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter if you'd like to stay up to date with our ongoing research. That's all from me today though, thanks again to the ITU team for inviting me to participate today, and thanks to all of you for joining us too.